and the Age of Invisible Machines, a practical guide to creating a hyper automated ecosystem of intelligent digital workers, um, which uh, it's I really urge everyone, everyone that is in digital should be reading this because <laughs> you lose a lot and you actually save a lot of things. But what you touched here, so a lot of the things you, you're talking here is precisely uh, the areas of, um, let's look at, uh, first of all, uh, explaining how this age is creating and the organizations of self-driving and growing ecosystem of interconnected automation accelerating in all aspects of business, which is one of the biggest things of the fourth industry revolution of the times we live today, whatever name we want to call it. And then, of course, you touch about conversational AI, changing the nature of every job and every company, which is still in the early days, but is already making a massive revolution and is going to change everything at the moment. Like you mentioned, at the moment, uh, for instance, even if I want to have someone supporting me, a lot of my team can be replaced with this. And it's not like I want to replace my team. Actually, I, I'm obliging all my team to use ChatGPT, which is another thing, is the education and support. And that's well, one of the things you touch a lot in the book, uh, besides the common myths about these areas, of these areas is as well the compelling discussions of the ethical dilemmas that lie in wait as mass adoption of conversational AI takes hold. So let's look at this because we didn't touch, I think we touched more of the technology. Let's look at the ethics. And I would say it's not just the ethics, is is the for instance, one of the things I was actually reading a quote, and I will I'll quote the quote because I think it's important here. It's from William Gibson, which is another, of course, personality that is changing the way we think. But William Gibson uh, wrote this, which is fantastic. Uh, that is precisely one thing that is key for what you're talking about. And I want to take this for the question for you. Times moves in one direction, memory another. We are this, that strange species that constructs artifacts intended to counter the natural flow of forgetting. So that's, this quote is fantastic for your book because yeah. in the end of the day, all this automation is a way of taking out what does matter and keeping the memories. But at the same time, of course, society is not as advanced as probably you and me would like to. Um, so how do you look at the ethics with all this part of the yeah. flow? It's time and technology are not stopping. So let's put it that way. Yeah, so I have two lenses. The first, you know, dates back to being in the film industry. So, you know, creating a lot of films um, over the years, uh, in my early, early life, um, I found myself at one time in Oklahoma, sitting around the table with a bunch of farmers. And I was used to telling people what I did and then being like, wow, what actors did you work with? And, you know, I, I would, you know, so when I told someone what I did, I was used to them being impressed, right? This was sort of part of the dialogue. But the farmer next to me leans over. He's like, what do you do? I say, you know, I explain what I do. And he goes, what's that good for? And I just paused. I was like, right, you grow food. Like you feed people. I waste their time. In fact, I measure success by how many people waste two hours <laughs> of their day watching what we create. I'm literally measuring success by the sheer quantity of hours wasted of human beings, right? Like, okay, I think we can understand that most businesses and most jobs are not necessities. <laughs> These are not growing food, right? He could have said that to a lot of people. Um, you know, why do we need tie makers? Do we need ties? Like, I don't, you know, I, I never saw a tie in my survival kit, right? Oh, I got to have a tie. So I think it's very clear that we invent jobs to keep ourselves busy and we invent jobs that aren't necessarily to create things we need. Um, and so the idea that we're gonna stop inventing jobs as machines start taking the jobs we have is a bit of a silly idea, in my opinion. We're really good at, you know, the invention of the cappuccino machine was the beginning of the barista, not the end of the barista. So I, I, I just don't know what people are looking backwards at and imagining that we're not going to create new jobs for ourselves, this seems like a ludicrous idea. Um, the, the second thing is, I, in some ways, I like the idea of artificial intelligence because it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a useful tool to explain smart machines. In a lot of ways, I don't like it because it compares machines to humans, and I wonder if that's even necessary at all. I think there was the original invention of the machine 
And I think they've been getting smarter and smarter and more complicated over the over the years throughout the Industrial Revolution. And when the airbag came along, if I explain that to someone in the early days and I said, yeah, the car knows when it's in an accident and it deploys this bag of air that softens the blow for hitting the steering wheel, they would be like, wow, so the car thinks? <laughs> like, uh, no, it's got a sensor in the front and the bumper hits. Like, once you know how it works, you've demystified it. How intelligent is the car? We're just talking about a gradual case of machines getting smarter and smarter. So if a, a, you know, a power saw can recognize the difference between cutting through a piece of wood and a finger, that's a good thing. And so machines have been killing us since the invention of machines. Cars kill us, factories kill us, nuclear weapons kill us, tanks kill us. Machines are killing us every day. Possibly them being smarter is the answer to them not killing us versus a danger that they're gonna do more killing. And, and so I think if we just lose the fact that machines are gonna replace humans, I, I just don't see that. Machines are just gonna keep getting smarter as they have been incrementally. And hopefully that button that Putin can press is smart, smart enough to know if he's crazy, smart enough to know if there's alignment, smart enough to think, I don't want it to be a simple machine. I want it to be a smart machine. And, and maybe this idea of artificial general intelligence and machines replacing humans is just a red herring. And, and, and all we're really talking about is just a gradual case of machines getting smarter and we're a long way from replacing humans maybe never because is that really the goal i don't i don't know that that's the goal for anyone in artificial intelligence to replace humans it's to help them as any machine has always been meant to do yeah it's uh, i agree with you and and uh, it's it's a paradox i think humanity is based on paradox and of course you mentioned cars, but if you go to uh, with the discovery of fire, it probably destroy all <laughs> the world. And the discovery of knives and and uh, well, a lot of the things we did before. <laughs>